Okay, we're on. Well, good morning, Facebook fans. Ralph Serpy, Kevin Griffin Moreno here. Good morning. For this morning's BCF 20-minute update. This morning, we are doing our 20-minute update on education advocacy. We're giving you a behind-the-scenes look at our 20-minute phone call. We invite people to call in to our 20-minute update. They will uh, be able to ask us questions. We'll give an update on what we're doing around education advocacy. Kevin? Um, yes, that is what we are going to do. Yes. And, uh, and you in Facebook will be able to uh, comment uh, down below, uh, like and share. See those uh, like and wow and heart bubbles go drifting across the screen. Please do so so we can uh, share this live stream with uh, folks far and wide. At 9 o'clock, we will open up the phone lines uh, to share our call with everyone, and we hope you'll stay with us and join us. We're coming up on uh, just over two years of our 20-minute updates. Over a thousand people each month uh, watch and listen to us, and um, we're very happy about that. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah. 50 seconds. I have 50 seconds to riff. Isn't that amazing? So our 20-minute updates are brought to us uh, by the letters uh, two for 20, no, are brought to us by our civic leadership donors, in particular our trustees and former trustees of the Baltimore Community Foundation. We are very um, uh, uh, thankful for their support and also to uh, some uh, uh, local foundations like the PNC Bank Foundation, NEE Casey Foundation, Weinberg, they've been very supportive of the Baltimore Community Foundation and the Civic Leadership Fund which brings us to uh, this, which brings us this 20 minute update. We're joined in studio today with Mike Wen, our web guy, Andrew Waldman, our social media guy, and today we have a special guest, John Mushai, our finance guy, he wants to see how this all works, as will you. So we are waiting for our countdown from Mike. Okay. We're going Silence. to, he's telling us to be silent. Good morning and welcome to today's 20-minute update, BCF's monthly series of interactive calls and Facebook live streams to give you an inside look at BCF, our initiatives, and the work we do in Baltimore City, Baltimore County, and the entire region. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Ralph Serpy with BCF, and joining me today in studio is Kevin Griffin Moreno, Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Ralph. Good morning, everyone. Well, before we get started, I want to thank our Civic Leadership Fund donors for their support. It is because of you that BCF can provide resources like the 20-minute update. Your support will keep these interactive updates going. And today, for today's 20-minute update, we are talking about education advocacy. Now, Kevin, back to you. Tell us about BCF's work in education in general. Let's start there. Sure. Um, we focus on three areas in education, school readiness, school leadership, and school effectiveness. Uh, we have a combination of grant programs, uh, uh, special initiatives, um, engagement work out in the community, but all of that is designed to prepare students in Baltimore City for school and pre prepare Baltimore City schools for students. So while BCF's uh, geographic footprint is Baltimore City and Baltimore County. For our education advocacy work, we are keenly focused in on Baltimore City. Very much so, although some of the uh, issues that we've uh, taken on over the years definitely have a statewide impact. Okay, so um, why are we involved in advocacy around education and how do we decide what to advocate for? There are two answers uh, to, to, to that question. Those were two questions, so I hope there are two answers. The, uh, the, the first answer is that um, Baltimore Community Foundation believes in doing advocacy because it's a way of extending the impact of our grant making and extending the impact of our donors' uh, charitable investments. Um, the grants that we make exist in a public policy context. 
Um, so it makes sense for us as a community foundation, which is able to tr take direct advocacy action to, um, to augment the, the impact of the grants that we make in the community by calling for good public policies that support the, the conditions that are favorable to what those grants are trying to affect. Um, with regard to education, our two priority areas currently are education and neighborhoods. And so all of our advocacy work flows from those two priority areas. Um, <clears throat> and uh, as for how we decide, uh, that's really our first touchstone is relevance. How relevant are these issues to the, uh, to, 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 to the work that we're taking on? Um, and secondly, how much of a voice can we have in the conversation? Are we just going to raise our hands and say, me too? Or are we actually going to bring value to the conversation? And then finally, what is our capacity to take it on? How much staff expertise, time, resources, and so forth? Uh, and I could, I'm going to stop there, but, but I, could, I could go on in all of the ways that we conduct advocacy. Okay, thank you. If you're just joining us, this is BCF's 20-minute update, our series of monthly interactive calls and Facebook live streams. I'm talking today with Kevin Griffin Moreno about education advocacy. If you're watching us on Facebook, please remember to like and share the stream so others may learn about BCF's action agenda in Baltimore. And if you're watching this recording on YouTube or on LinkedIn, please also remember to like and share this video. So, um, Kevin, you jumped over this really quickly, but um, you mentioned that BCF is a nonprofit, but we're also a registered lobbyist in Annapolis. That's correct. And being a registered lobbyist allows us to advocate and it also allows us to leverage the grant-making dollars that we have. Sure, and just to, uh, on a clarifying note, um, any nonprofit can advocate. Advocacy is more than just lobbying. Lobbying is one tool in a in a very large box. Uh, uh, lobbying is uh, is one tool in a very large box of advocacy tools. Um, because we uh, are a public charity, we can take a particular exemption which sets a standard under which we can both fund direct lobbying activities and also engage in them. However, uh, 501c3 nonprofits are generally allowed to lobby and even foundations, even private foundations, can in, in cases of self-defense, things that are um, um, very directly related to their industry, they can, they can engage in, in some limited lobbying. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so let's get back to um, education advocacy. Sure. Can you give us a brief overview of the issues that um, we're supporting in Annapolis this year around education? Absolutely. Uh, as in the past, we, we are, fo uh, we are uh, championing efforts to expand pre-kindergarten uh, to, um, to an increase, uh, ideally all, all Maryland families. Um, we uh, have also joined with Central Scholarship Bureau um, to advocate a, a measure to end uh, scholarship award displacement, which is what happens when a, an, a college or a university uh, gives a student a package of financial aid to entice them to come, but then if the student is successful in raising other money to fund their, their education and living expenses, the institution can then reduce the amount that they initially offered, which has pretty drastic con consequences, especially for first time um, So if they get students. a financial aid package, but they also get outside scholarship awards, exactly. that financial aid package can be reduced by those, by those scholarship awards. Right, and uh, so uh, uh, legislation that would um, reduce this practice is moving through the General Assembly right now. But our, our most um, uh, pressing issue, I think, uh, from our perspective this session is uh, one that, that everybody's been talking about, which is the Baltimore City Schools deficit um, and, the, and what can be done to fix that. Um, so as I think most of our subscribers know, Baltimore City Public Schools is facing a $130 million budget shortfall. If it's not fixed, um, we're looking at layoffs of up to a thousand city schools employees and uh, cuts to programs uh, uh, to the point of elimination programs such as art for example um, happily there are proposed solutions in both the near term and the longer term 
The near-term solution is a combination of city and state funding. Um, so a, a couple weeks ago, or a few days ago, uh, Mayor Catherine Pugh and Delegate Maggie McIntosh of Baltimore City announced a, a proposed package of, of uh, funding which would combine city and state allocations um, to, to provide $180 million to Baltimore City Schools over, over three years. Um, the the uh, thing that needs to, to be uh, addressed is that the, the, the uh, Hogan administration needs to put in a supplemental budget. That's Governor Hogan of that Maryland. Is Governor Hogan of Maryland. His administration needs to put in a supplemental budget in order to approve the allocation of the state portion of that funding. So what's the Community Foundation's role in any of this? So uh, uh, we're, we're doing six things. Um, and before I get to those six things, I also want to mention the longer term fix, which is uh, there's a, a commission, it's the, the Commission on Excellence in Education, but it's co colloquially known as the Kerwin Commission. And this is the group of um, uh, public policy makers, private individuals, advocates, and others who have been uh, working uh, diligently to develop a, a uh, series of structural funding formula recommendations to, to, to provide to the state. Um, so uh, uh, their, their report and recommendations are due starting in December of this year and will be debated in earnest beginning in 2018. But back to what BCF is doing this session. Um, we have released several action alerts um, to our mailing lists uh, talking about this problem, uh, other communications, uh, advocacy communications activities, so including we, this call. So we asked thousands of people who are on our mailing list, who are who, fo who uh, follow us on the Twitter and on the Facebook to um, respond to those action alerts and right. contact elec their elected officials. Yeah, and I'm happy to say that we've gotten some really good responses. Uh, okay. So thank you, so thank uh, you to everybody who, who responded. Um, on March 13th, uh, a group of our um, uh, trustees, including our CEO, Tom Wilcox, uh, had a, an opinion editorial piece published in the Baltimore Sun, which uh, talked about uh, the, the, the different fixes to the structural uh, school sh uh, budget shortfall and, and what needs to happen in order to affect those fixes. One of those trustees, Mark Fetting, who is the chair of our education committee, spoke at a February 23rd rally in Annapolis calling for, uh, for, for adequate funding for Baltimore City Schools. And um, this was a, a, a reprise of, of a speaking engagement he had a couple of years ago when we were advocating for uh, school construction money. Um, we also participated in the uh, Fix the Gap um, campaign that Baltimore Education Coalition and others have, have uh, initiated. Um, if you're on social media, that's hashtag fi fix the gap, and that involves sending messages both directly to the governor and policymakers, but also to, to uh, flood social media with messages that our schools need to be funded uh, both uh, in the immediate term and in the long term. And that's, and that's an effort to fix the structural issue around the Correct. Uh, city schools budget. Exactly. Um, and uh, we remain in close contact with Dr. Santelisis and her office uh, and with the, 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 the Board of Education um, being a partner uh, when, when appropriate and pushing when appropriate. And, um, and finally, and, and not least important, we provide grant funding to a whole variety of nonprofit organizations specifically to conduct advocacy uh, around um, uh, around education issues so uh, this year for for in 2016 for example we allocated grants to ACLU of Maryland advocates for children and youth Baltimore Education Coalition Baltimoreans United in leadership development and others to pursue um, education reform issues in Annapolis. Well, we're going to hold up right there, sure. and we are going to open up the call Great. and the live stream for questions. If you dialed into our call today, you can press star six now to unmute yourself and ask a question. 
After you've finished asking the question, please remember to hit star six once again to mute your line, otherwise we get a little feedback. So if you'd like to ask a question, please press star six now to unmute yourself and ask a question. And after you finish asking your question, please press star six again to mute your line. If you're following us on live stream on Facebook, simply ask your question in the comments below in the video. And um, if you're also following us on Facebook and you have a comment, just feel free to have a conversation amongst yourselves while you're following on Facebook. No need to, um, to just simply ask a question. Or you can tweet a question using hashtag 20 minute update. That's two zero minute update. Um, opening the first, um, uh, opening the first uh, call for question. While we're waiting for folks to, to call in with a question, I, I just wanted to uh, clarify um, what it is that advocates are requesting of the governor. Um, <clears throat> so what the, the legislature, um, under the leadership of Delegate McIntosh and others, did was uh, find the funding within the state budget as proposed that would enable to uh, the the schools to be the city schools to be uh, fully funded over the next three, or adequately funded over the next three years. Um, what Governor Hogan needs to do now is introduce a supplemental budget that uses the 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 fix that the legislature and Mayor Pugh have crafted, um, so that the gubernatorial administration, the General Assembly, and the city are all working in tandem, as well as city schools are all working in tandem. To, uh, to find a, a solution that works. Thank you. If you have a question on, your, on our phone line today, please press star six to unmute your line and ask your question. Please don't be shy. We have scores of people on the line today. And after our phone calls, you always contact us and say, I had a question but um, felt squeamish to ask. Please jump right in and cut us off. Kevin, we talk about education advocacy during the uh, session in the spring. Uh, what happens over the rest of the year? It doesn't seem like advocacy turns on and turns off. Uh, what happens after the general session? Um, right. So the, the Maryland General Assembly, the uh, Maryland House of Delegates, and the State Senate meet for 90 days beginning in the second week of January of each year to consider 2,300 to 2,500 pieces of legislation. Um, <clears throat> it's fast and it's furious uh, and a lot gets done. But as you say, that's not the, the final story. For one thing, uh, there's advocacy to be done at the local level and at the federal level. Uh, we have a lot of involvement, increasing involvement at the, at, at the city level. Um, and um, um, some degree of involvement at the federal level. Um, <clears throat> we also spend, since, since, legis since policymakers, even at the local level, don't have a lot of time during the General Assembly session to really meet and deliberate or, or, you know, at, at length over these issues, um, the off session uh, is, is, uh, is a great time to build those relationships to hear their priorities, to meet them in, in, in their <coughs> districts, um, and to have a, a, a much more time for a thoughtful discussion on the issues that matter. Great. Thank you. Um, a question coming in through email is, um, how is the business community and its philanthropic arm responding to this gap in funding and education funding in Baltimore City Schools? Um, I think everybody recognizes that the the urgency uh, of this certainly within the business and philanthropic communities, the private sector here in Baltimore, um, we collectively recognize that uh, Baltimore City is the ec economic engine of the state, um, and that uh, if businesses are to thrive here, we need to have a workforce that's that's prepared. To, uh, to, to take jobs in, in a changing economy. And that starts 
that's, that starts before kindergarten. Um, so I, I think that, that the, certainly the philanthropic community and, and increasingly the business community are um, aware of the, the need, the urgent need to build a pipeline that takes our kids from cradle to college or career um, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a thoughtful uh, and equitable fashion. And how, <clears throat> what are the venues for um, Baltimore's business community, Baltimore's business community to come together philanthropically around education funding? Um, how can they come together? Sure. Well, Here's my plug for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I think thanks. Um, I, I would uh, r highly recommend that folks seek out the Association of Baltimore Area Grant Makers, abbreviated ABAG, um, in addition to having, having an, uh, uh, an affinity group of funders, uh, family foundations, private foundations, and so forth, corporate foundations that are uh, engaged on an ongoing basis in, in conversations about education funding, other related issues, uh, they also have multiple programs uh, throughout the year uh, that members can take advantage of. So uh, ABAG is a great resource in that regard. Well, thank you. Um, we are coming up to... Oh, question. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Good morning, Ralph and Kevin. This is Vanessa. Good morning, Good Vanessa. Good morning. Uh, question for you. So of the funds that we've been um, promised, and I use that lightly, from the city and the state, do we have a sense from city schools how those funds will fill the gap, meaning is a priority for those dollars to go directly back to the schoolhouses? Because that's what I'm hearing from um, parents and teachers and principals on the show. That, that's a that's a great question, um, a and question for our Facebook people. And um, that's something that honestly I I don't have a lot of clarity on uh, right now. I think that they've that there's a strong as you as you mentioned a strong desire to have those dollars flow, flow directly to the schoolhouses. I don't know if there's any any um, any uh, certainty on how they'll be used. But um, but it, it does give me the the opportunity to mention that City Schools has announced a series of um, of town hall meetings um, where uh, residents can can share their priorities and um, uh, talk, talk about where they think the money should flow. And if you go to, sorry, I'm trying to find it. Um, if you go to the Baltimore City Public Schools. Uh, website. There's a calendar of those um, of those town hall meetings. Thank you, thank you, Danessa. So, getting involved, uh, logging on to the Baltimore City Public Schools website, finding out when their town hall meetings are happening and attending those meetings. Uh, logging on to bcf.org, signing up for our e-news, and finding out um, and responding to our um, advocacy alerts. We appreciate when that happens and we appreciate when you do that. We are uh, coming up to uh, 9.20 right now, which means that this 20-minute update is coming to an end. I want to thank you again to our Civic Leadership Fund donors for making all of this possible. We'd like to thank all of you on the line today for making, uh, taking the time to learn about our education advocacy work. Uh, for over two years, we've been uh, bringing you these 20-minute updates, hashtag Fix the Gap, on the Twitter. Uh, we'll be back next month on April 20th at 9 a.m. for a conversation around legacy giving. Thank you all for your time this morning. Remember, share, like, and wow on Facebook if you're watching this on um, YouTube and LinkedIn, please like and share as well. Thank you so much for joining us on the phone today, and uh, we appreciate you joining us. Kevin, thank you so much. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you all.